Hello everyone, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to use static types in Godot 4. But what exactly is static typing? Well, it's simply telling the variable what kind of data it will be holding, such as an integer, string, boolean, etc. And the data type you set cannot be changed down the line. And there are a lot of benefits to using static typing, the main one being increased performance. Because when you don't give Godot an explicit type, it has to infer or make an educated guess on what kind of data you are storing. This, of course, causes a big hit to performance while Godot has to figure out what the heck you're telling it to do. And the other reason is cleaner, safer, and more understandable code. You no longer need to guess what kind of data a variable takes because the engine will force you to go along with the rules you set earlier. This leads to less errors and makes it easier to collaborate with other developers. So here we have a number variable. It's set to 100. This is a whole number or an integer. So all we need to do is type colon int equals 100. And now this will always be an integer. You can't set it to be anything else. So if we try setting our number to a, another integer, it'll work just fine. But something interesting happens if we set it to be a float. If we set num to be, let's say, 10.27, and we go ahead and print out num, and we run, you'll see it automatically round it to an integer. This is called typecasting, where the engine attempts to convert a data type as close as possible to another type. However, sometimes this isn't possible, such as trying to set our number to be a string. Here you'll see we just get an error. You may notice I also have a type on the function itself. This is a void, meaning that the function does not return any value. So here I have a simple function where we just add the a and b arguments together and return them as a whole number. However, if we try to return a not integer, the whole thing with their own error. You may also notice that we can actually set the types of the arguments themselves. And there's nothing stopping us from passing in non-integer types. So let's say we want to enter in a float. And then down here, we can go ahead and cast our float b to be an integer b. And now let's go ahead and try to call this function. So add, I'll pass in an integer, so 15. And let's do 6.7. This will work just fine. 6 will also work because it automatically it gets assumed as a float. However, if we try making our integer argument a float, so 15.5, I will get a warning because the engine will convert this to be an integer, uh, which is not recommended. Or if I enter in a string, we'll just get an error because it cannot convert that. And one last thing I'll show is how to do arrays. So let's do variable nums. Set this to be an array of only integers. And here we can set a few test integers, so one, two, three. And just like our other type variables, we can set them to be the same type, so nums zero, which is gonna be our first index. Let's set this to be 81. This will work just fine. However, if we try setting nums zero to be a string, we will get an error. Anyways guys, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.